Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and holy God, we want to thank you for another day along the journey. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through this week, through every trial, tribulation, and challenge, through every joy, ah, through every heartbreak, through everything, Lord. Thank you, God, for looking over us and protecting us and protecting our families. Heavenly Father, in this time of teaching and sharing your word, it is my prayer that you are glorified and you are magnified. We want to lift up your son, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, open our eyes that we can see you in the word. Open our ears that we can hear what you're saying to us in your word. Open our heart to have compassion and to comprehend the depth of which you love us, the depth of which you're calling us, the depth of which you want us to move and breathe and have our being in you. Heavenly Father, bless those that are able to watch live tonight and bless those that will see it on rerun and on demand and on Morningstar Church, our website. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this platform for Morningstar Church. I thank you for the senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Beverly D. Frazier and her willingness to partner uh, with me, that we could partner together to share the gospel chapter by chapter through this summer of 2022. Again, Lord, be glorified and be magnified. Let a soul be saved. Let a mind be renewed. Let a heart be transformed. Let a life be changed as we seek to follow Jesus and be disciples of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, I hope that you've had a great day in the name of Jesus. Uh, yeah, Lord. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be going to chapter four, and I'll be reading from the NIV version. Now, as I, this is going to first take us through the temptation of Christ. And as I go through it, I want you to listen for these three things, not stated specifically, but implicated in the words that we will hear. I want you to listen for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I said, just put eyes, <laughs> pride of life, <laughs> love the flesh, um, whatever you hear, go ahead and, and post it right in there as I read. Okay. Now the word of God reads as thus. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus answered him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended to him. When Jesus heard that John, his cousin, had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulon and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. 
as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout all of Galilee, teaching in, the, in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them all. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Thus far the scriptures, may the Lord add a blessing to not only the reading and the hearing of his holy word, but the application of his holy word to our life right here and right now. Praise God. So we see in chapter four that Jesus having been baptized uh, in the river Jordan after having that high holy day. Do you remember when you were baptized? <laughs> when you were blessed, amen. And it's just a high holy day to have that experience. One of my joys of pastoring in Cape May was doing um, the ocean baptism. Although a couple of times we thought we were going to be carried away <laughs> by the oceans, but we just rolled the waves in the name of Jesus. It was just very, very special, and I thank God uh, for it. But here, after having this high holy experience, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested by the devil. And so, if you consider your own life, there are times when you are blessed, great things happen, or you have a real special spiritual experience, a great time at church, uh, or just a you hear the Lord in a special way. And then sometimes before you get out of certain churches or you before you even finish your weekend or as you enter into your work week, uh, you become tempted and tested by the devil to see whether or not you really believe what you said you believe. Are you really going to act like what you heard in your sermon the day before? Are you going to live your scriptures out loud? So as we go through this testing in the wilderness, first I want you to understand that maybe for you, I know for me, the wilderness would appear to be like a scary place. The wilderness would appear to be like, you know, just a terrible place to have to go to. But we saw in chapter three that John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. Now, in my sanctified imagination, since Jesus and John were cousins, I'm sure they played in the wilderness all the time. Uh, I believe it's when we get to Luke, we will see that um, um, when Jesus is in the wilderness, it says Jesus was there with the animals and the angels came to minister to him. So Jesus wasn't scared of being in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus wasn't, wasn't you know, frightened or challenged because he was in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus created the world with God, you know, in the beginning. <laughs> As they say in John, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and through him were all things made. So there was nothing about the wilderness itself that was the test. Uh, we all go through our wilderness experiences and we grow through our wilderness experiences. Um, when you consider even the Hebrew children and their 40 years in the wilderness, God still provided for them in the wilderness. And so we see right here in this fourth chapter and the first verse, as Jesus uh, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he was led there to be tempted by the devil. 
Now, this tempting, this temptation and these testings were not so that Jesus had to prove something to God. He already had God's blessings. He already had God. His father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. No, this testing uh, was about one letting Satan know, no, this is the anointed one. This is Christ. This is indeed the Messiah. But it was also to let all things, all creatures under heaven, under the earth, to know that this is the Christ. And so here we have the different temptations that come. Now, he wasn't tempted, it says after, didn't say during, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and he says, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, this is where we have uh, one of the temptations that come and the temptations that come, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. So here we have lust of the flesh. Here we have Jesus, he was hungered, he had fasted. You know, whenever you fast, you know, it's, there's a different levels of hunger that can come depending on your level of experience, you know, with the fast. Although it seems to be a thing today to have intermittent fast, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, but here it says that Jesus was hungry. And so here comes the devil to say like, okay, if you're the son, that's also the pride of life. If you are who you say you are, then turn these stones to become bread. My brothers and my sisters, as you watch this, understand that the devil will come through people will want to challenge who you claim you are. They'll want to challenge that you're really committed to God. They'll want to challenge that you're really committed to living a life uh, before Christ that is holy. They challenge when you're on a job that you really know what you're doing. They'll challenge you in different ways. Are you who you say you are? Or, or, or as folks like to say, well, who do you think you are? No, I don't think I know I'm the beloved child of God, you know. But Jesus doesn't get caught up in debating with the devil. Jesus always responds to the devil with the correct word from God. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Okay, so again, here we have the example to as the tempter comes to challenge us, we respond to that challenge with the word of God. And so then the devil takes him up to the holy city, had him stand on the highest point of the temple, and he says, if... You are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Again, here it is, again, challenging to the pride of life. If you are who you say you are, then go ahead and jump. I can remember seeing a commercial of a movie. I don't remember the name of the movie, uh, but it's like there was an evil one who was tempting a little girl you know, who said, well, if you are who you say you are, you should go ahead and jump. And she said, you first. <laughs> um, I never saw the movie, but that little commercial always cracked me up. Um, but again, the devil could not get to Jesus's ego. And just for a footnote, many times when there are conflicts, we need to do a self-examination as to whether or not it is our ego, is it our flesh that is causing us to be engaged in that negativity? Are we being, you know, righteously indignant or are we just playing the fool? Are we allowing the pride of life to overtake our common sense? And so Jesus says, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. We don't need to test God, amen. And so then we come to the next, the third test. Again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. He says, all this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. Now here, um, here we see that it is lust of the eyes. What do you see? Um, 
what is it that you see? You know, when we when we look about the fall of humankind with Adam and Eve, it said that when Eve looked upon the fruit and saw that it was good to eat, again, that was the lust of the eyes. Amen. And her husband who was with her went along with it. But again, that's a different Sunday school lesson. But here the devil takes him up, shows him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And so I believe that as Satan was showing that to Jesus, there are many different levels within the world that he was showing them. You consider the different institutions that run the world. If you consider not only Hollywood, not only the music industry, uh, not only the arts and high fashion, uh, I believe that those institutions that were created in order to serve the people uh, were coming under his domain. I've always believed that education, and I support education. My girls and I got a whole bunch of degrees. I support education, but education as an institution is a system uh, that comes more often. Uh, but we'll get into that even more as we go uh, through our study. I think I might be freezing, uh, but let's just end there. Sometimes my computer connect. Okay, I think we're back on. So again, he's showing him all these kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Have you ever noticed that with different kind of stars, whether it's movie stars or stars in the music industry that they get up on a pedestal and then they're knocked down they're just knocked down you know you, you'll see that in the world they, the world will build you up only to knock you back down lord have mercy and so he showed them all the world in their splendor and then he says all this i will give you if you will bow down and worship me my Lord, my Lord, how often I wonder have people given in to thinking that they were going to be able to get this whole world. Jesus says later in the scriptures, and we'll, we'll read it as we go through this summer. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Lord have mercy. How many have lost their soul thinking that they were going to gain the world? only to be tricked by the enemy of our soul. And so Jesus again would not bow down and worship him. Jesus said, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. That's one thing about a test. The test doesn't last a lifetime. The test may last for a season, maybe a long season. Uh, but as we continue to believe in God, worship God, serve God, uh, God will enable us through his Holy Spirit to make it through the test. And so after Jesus has gone through this testing period in the wilderness, uh, where he's tested by Satan, giving him the response by the word of God, which we will see as we walk through the Gospels, that that is also preparation for how he has to answer the religious elite, elite the religious leaders who will come, quest, they're always questioning Jesus' purpose, questioning who Jesus is, questioning who does he think he is. And Jesus always answers uh, with a word from the Lord. He always answers with insight from God. Now, so when Jesus had heard that, you know, John had been put in prison, he went to Zebulon. And so we see in verse 15, the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea. Um, as a historic footnote, early in the development of Christianity uh, in the Middle East, it was known, they weren't necessarily known as, as, as just Christians and disciples, but they were known as those who followed the way. They followed the way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. So by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness has seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. 
Amen. Like the 23rd Psalm, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And here we see that Jesus is bringing a great light to those that have been in darkness. And so from this time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now we know that as we got in chapter three of Matthew, we know that John was preaching, repent, repent, repent. And here Jesus is coming saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now this notion of the kingdom of heaven is not just the notion of a place of heaven, but it's known as a, it's known as a place of authority. It's known as the place of justice. Uh, it's known as indeed that the kingdom of heaven is here to be able to set you free in the name of Jesus. So here we have Jesus being this light. He's bringing teaching, preaching, and healing uh, to this area. Uh, oh, one other thing about the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew, the kingdom of heaven is mentioned 32 times. So you think it's like a commercial that you'll see about Nike, just do it. So here God has this commercial through Jesus Christ about the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means right here, right now, the kingdom of heaven to rule and to reign with authority in our lives. So my question to you tonight, are you allowing the kingdom of heaven to rule and reign and have authority in your life? I'm not saying in the life of your children. I'm not saying in the life of your boss at work. I'm saying in your life, are you letting the kingdom of heaven rest, rule and abide and reign in you? Lord have mercy, let the light so shine. And so he's calling for repent. We talked last night about how we need to repent and bow down and worship Christ. Amen. Satan wants to be worshiped, but we worship Jesus Christ, the living one, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And now we go into Jesus calling his disciples. And I just love this section. Um, and so we see that he goes by the Sea of Galilee and he says, come and follow me and I will send you out to fish, to be fishers of people. At verse 20 said, at once they left their nets and followed him. Second question for tonight, what is your net? What has you in a net? What has you bound up? What do you need to leave? What net do you need to leave to follow him? Jesus is still calling people to come and follow him. Jesus wants to use you and use me as his disciples to call and to make other disciples. We need to be reaching out to folks and say, come, let's follow Jesus. Let's help them let down, let out, let go of their net. Let go of that thing that binds them up. Let them be set free through the righteous blood of Jesus. Beloved of God, let down your net. Let it down, leave it, and follow him. Then we see that, and that was for Peter and Andrew. Then there were two other brothers, James and John of Zebulee. And um, as they were preparing nets, Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, it's important to understand that their leaving their father was leaving the business, the family business of being a fisherman. They were leaving the father and it was an, it was an expectation that as the sons of the father, that should something happen to their father, if he dies, then it would be their responsibility to take care of their mother. And we see that play out later in the gospels about this issue as to, uh, to the mother. Um, but they are leaving the place of expectation to go to the place of anticipation of following their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He followed them to become disciples, to become fishers of not fish, but fishers of men. Jesus still is calling us to let down our net and to follow him. And they did it immediately. They did not call a meeting of the family to discuss it. They didn't call their friends to discuss it. They didn't say, well, let me wait and see if he's really who he says he is. No, they were led by the Spirit and followed him immediately. 
And so as Jesus has these first disciples, he goes throughout Galilee, he's teaching, and in 23 it says, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. See, that's good news. That's good news. And that's what we're challenged to do in this 21st century, in this 2022nd year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called to proclaim the good news, the good news that Jesus is real, the good news that Jesus heals, the good news that Jesus delivers, the good news that Jesus came to set you free from whatever has you in captivity, the good news. And so he goes around and he's healing diseases, sickness among the people. Do you know that Jesus is still a healer today? Oh, praise God. We have a 6 a.m. prayer call through Morningstar Church. You can connect with it through the Morningstar Connect uh, website. And we have our list. We pray for those who are sick and shut in. We pray for those uh, that are looking for new opportunities. We pray for families. We pray for those who are grieving. We have prayer seeking God. And every second Friday, we have the midnight cry where we get online at midnight and we we cry out to God, seeking his will, seeking direction from him. And so here, the good news of the kingdom, Jesus was preaching and proclaiming. And then the news about him spread all over Syria. And people brought to him all those who were ill with various diseases, suffering. Lord have mercy. And he healed them all. And he had large crowds that followed him from all over Galilee, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan. Praise be to God. You know, one thing about Facebook, there are folks that are following you. You don't even know that they're following you. Some are following you to mind your business. Some are following you hoping that you'll have a downfall. But others are following you because you're encouragement to them. Others are following you because they see the light of Jesus in you. Others are following you because they know that you love the Lord. It is my prayer tonight that there'll be those who will follow us on this journey through the gospels and know that Jesus is with them. Jesus is with them and that we can count on the word of God and our faith in God to know that when the tests come, lust of the eyes, pride of life, lust of the flesh, that the Lord will be with us. The Lord will guide us. The Lord will encourage us. Beloved, let's let down our nets and let's follow him. Let's go deeper in our relationship with him. Let us know that we know that we know that the wilderness experience is not necessarily a negative experience, but it's a growthful experience. It's not necessarily, it does not come. The temptation does not come from God. The temptation comes from the devil. And know that you know that you know he is already a defeated foe. The devil is defeated. And only respond with the word of God. That's why I'm so grateful that we're coming together, doing this deep dive, so we can know the word to be able to give the word that those that would want to tear us down, those that would want to tempt us, those that would want to see us fall. But praise be to God. Jesus came to lift you up. Jesus came to encourage you. Jesus came so that we could be in a deeper relationship with God. And that is our goal for this summer, to have a deeper relationship with God, to have a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to listen for the Holy Spirit, to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us. Be encouraged tonight, beloved of God. Let us close in prayer. Most gracious and holy God, we just want to thank you right now. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, O oh Lord, for teaching us about Jesus in the wilderness. O oh Lord, I pray right now for having a wilderness experience. Oh, where they are being tested on every side through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life.
blood of Jesus will make each and every person victorious, victorious, Lord. Even me, Lord, when I go through my testing, Lord, I claim victory through the righteous blood of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the proclamation that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is my prayer this evening, Lord, that your kingdom rests, rules, and abides in our, in our life, in our being, in our temple, which is the temple of you, the living God. It is my prayer that we will be obedient to your word, that we'll learn your word. Oh, Heavenly Father, we declare and we decree that you have authority over our life. We submit to you, O oh Lord. We bow down to you, O oh God. We submit to your will and your way. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for your divine provision. We thank you, O oh Lord, that the plans you have for us, the plans to prosper us and heal us and are not of evil. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray not only for those that are watching this, but those that may watch in the future, Lord. We pray for them. We pray for their children and their children's children. We pray for our nation, that our nation will indeed humble itself, turn from its wicked ways so that we can hear from heaven, hear from you, O oh Lord and submit to you so you will heal our land. We need this land of the United States of America healed. Heal, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer. Amen. Beloved of God, have a real blessed Sunday. I will be here tomorrow night at 7, where we will have our Sunday summaries, and we will deal with chapter 5 of Matthew. Please have a wonderful day of worship in church or online, you can watch Morningstar Church online at Morningstar Connect, or you can watch it through YouTube. Again, I give you blessings in the name of our Heavenly Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Beverly D. Frazier. Remember, God loves you, and so do I, but he loves you best. You are blessed to be a blessing. Find someone to bless before the weekend's over. Take care. Love you.